In today's video, I'm gonna be going over my private label results, seven months selling on Amazon FBA, and how I was able to generate over $35,000 in my first year. Hey everybody, my name is Mike, and for those who are new, I am deeply passionate about e-commerce, high performance, and fitness, and this channel will be a mixture of all three of those to give you guys lots of value, tips and tricks, and ways to overall have a better life. Now, starting things off in this video, Basically, I want to go over my story of how I got involved with Amazon FBA and why I chose to work towards building a private label brand that I hope one day I could scale into the multi-millions. So to give you a little backstory summary of how I got involved with Amazon FBA, now, it basically my journey stems back to August of 2021, I believe, when I decided to buy into a course and to especially buy into mentorship. Now, it wasn't until November of that year where I found my first product idea and I you know, really was excited. I got ahead of myself and I jumped to purchasing a domain, made a logo, made packaging done, and I was so excited. And then I realized, oh crap, I'm supposed to have this product checked out from the mentors. So I had it checked out, uh, filled out the form submission, and long story short, it was rejected. And it was for good reasons too. The product was oversaturated and my product had really no way of really standing out from the competition. So honestly, you know, that kind of bummed me out. However, I knew that I would just spend more time, focus and effort, and really like dial down to finding a better product and a better opportunity. So long behold, I found my product. And this product I still sell now and is my brand. So that's very exciting. So guys, don't give up. You know, just keep doing product research and soon enough you'll find your product you know, that will hopefully be a success. Then I placed my first inventory order in January of last year, actually, and spoke with my supplier, first ordered a sample from a few suppliers, found one which I loved. It was high quality, you know, fast response time through Skype, and it's been game changer. So I placed a first inventory order of a thousand units. Now reflecting back on it, I really feel like I should have started with between 300 to 500 units, but um, I had the cash flow available to buy a larger order because I assumed I would be able to sell out fast, which was the total opposite, which I can explain in a later video. So I placed the order, Chinese New Year happened from January 15th to mid-February. And then once factories were back in motion and, and in the phase of the production, um, my product was finally ready for you know, shipment to Amazon in about late March, so anyways, it was about 30 days for it to actually ship over. And then it arrived at Amazon in around May and I was live on Amazon by June 15th, prime eligible. So yeah, guys, so that was a shortened summary of my product launch and my experience starting off with Amazon FBA. Now, if you guys wanna see a more in-depth video sharing you guys my you know, successes, my failures, my lessons learned, um, all the you know, pros and cons and, and all that stuff, you know, please leave a comment down below and I'll be happy to do so. All right, guys, now I'm gonna walk you through the five steps that you can use to really increase your sales on Amazon in the new year and for many years to come. Now, these are the ones I've used and they're proven strategies and tactics that really took my sales from one, two, three to 15, 20, even 30 sales a day. Now let's begin. Strategy number one is to set a strike through price on your products. All right, guys, so once you go over to manage all inventory within your Amazon Seller Central account, you're gonna to wanna to click edit on the listing that you wanna change and create a future strike through price. Now navigate to where it says list price and set that to the higher value that you wanna have a future list price at. So for instance, mine's higher at $39.99 and set your price to that exact amount, $39.99. Now you may get lower sales for a few days. Don't worry about this. No, you're going to want to have your, your price and list price set at the same amount for five to seven days. And then you can navigate back over here and then change the year price to 32 or whatever your price is. And then after about an hour, you can, then you should see a strike through price on your listing. And now I'm going to show you an example of what it's supposed to look like after it's all done. Now, for example, let's go over to Amazon and say we were selling some kind of a pet product. Now, if we scroll down and look for a product which ha which has a strike-through price, and we'll come across this product, 
Um, this product right here is a pet hair removal glove. And you can see in the search results, it says it's seven and a nine on a strike through price. And then if you come over to the actual listing, the list price shows a slash through price of eight and a nine, and it's minus 11% off. Now this is an example of a strike through price. Strategy number two is to set a sale price on your products and or set a coupon code on your products. All right guys, so you're gonna wanna set your sale price to $1 or more less than the year price. Now don't worry about the list price and the year price. That should stay the same. So, you know, set the sale price to $1 or more less than the year price and then set the date that you wanna run your sale at and then set an end date and then that's it. Now, as long as you have the sale price a few dollars lower than it's been in, in the last 30 days, then you will see a lowest price in 30 days badge on your listing, as well as a save blank amount in the search results and big enough on your listing, which will attract buyers and increase the eyes that actually come on to your listing. And then in theory should increase your overall sales. Now, I'm gonna show you an example of that. Now navigating over to Amazon, you know, say if you're selling a pet product, now let's look for a sale price listing. Now if we scroll down, scroll down, we'll look for a good one. Now there are a few here. Um, I want to show you a better example of one, which is at a reasonable price. Uh, let's see, keep scrolling down. Let's see what we can find. How about we go to the next page and see what's over there. Okay, so this is a um, an example that's good enough at a high price. Now, say for instance your product's right here, it'll say a save of 60%, which is huge. Buyers are like, oh crap, I gotta buy this now um, because it's you know a big savings of 60% off. Now, if you do it right, and say if it's the lowest price you have in 30 days, I'm gonna also show lowest price in 30 days and that big save 60% badge on your listing and in the search results, as well as how much you'll actually save, which according to this says $53. Strategy number three is to set your price to a competitive price point that is still going to allow you to make enough profit and stand out from the competition. All right, guys. Now, say if this product right here was your product. Now, say if you really want to stand out from the competition and set a real price point that is, you know, really will stand out and hopefully, you know, generate more sales. Now, what you can do is scroll down to the best seller rank and select on the category. You know, you should have one or two or three categories. Choose one of the categories and see what the other sellers are selling it for. Now, here is the Amazon best sellers page where it used to say that it was updated every hour. Now it says it's updated frequently. So look for the products that are similar, which your product is, and then, you know, see what the prices are. 14, seven, nine, nine, and just take a look. And then what you can do next is you can take the average price of that from an average price calculator, and then, you know, really kind of like see, okay, where can I make a healthy profit margin and then set your price at that amount. Strategy number four is to get professional photos from a photographer. All right, guys. So I want to start by showing you a brand which has done it right and has really gotten high quality photos from a photographer and also use 3D renders to make their listing look stunning and clearly stand out from the competition. Now, this photo right here looks amazing. It's high quality. It's the real product. It even has food in it and it's super clean and just vibrant. And this product here shows a 3D image of the actual inside of it, which looks really, really nice. And here, this looks great. You know, there's a real cat, uh, nice graphics, nice text, nice, you know, pictures. It just looks really, really like, you know, bright and, you know, sunny. And this picture over here is like, you know, really high quality showing like a real cat and a possibly a 3D render of the actual um, thing. And this picture here looks great. Um, you know, again, it's just showing, you know, nice text. And this listing is clearly a sign of a high quality listing. And this picture right here showing is easy to clean. And it's a 3D image of the power supply with USB-C. It just looks super high quality. And it's obviously the best seller in this product. Um, now to show you an example of a very, very awful um, listing with photos is this right here. You can tell right away that the, the um, it's blurry in the background. The, uh, the animals are obviously photoshopped and it's just very like ugly looking. 
and it's a very like ugly feeder you know that like greenish blue with the yellow it's very ugly and this picture has you know bad text it looks just really kind of weird it's just not that great this picture is okay showing the animals and this picture is decent you know showing an animal at the cage this picture is okay actually but this next picture is blurry and come on guys that's horrible like you don't want to have your listing look like this because you can obviously tell it's you know low quality it's blurry it's just it's just thrown together it's very ugly and and buyers will definitely stay away with it and this picture is okay with the installation now you can tell i mean it's just like a low quality image or and like it's a low quality listing uh, which has you know four and three stars yeah a few five stars but i mean overall a very low listing strategy number five but last but not least is to optimize your ppc campaigns regularly and to optimize your cost per clicks per your keyword all right guys so now i want to walk you through a example of how to optimize your ppc campaigns plus your cost per click campaigns I mean your cost per click keywords now for example say you're selling a product at forty dollars and you want to make your a cost on average at your break even of you know thirty percent now if you don't know um a cost is advertising cost of sale and you want to be able to match that with your break even profit margin of thirty percent or less now obviously like you want it to be a lot less than thirty percent so you make a profit off the ppc but so anyways now tips I have for you is you're going to want to lower your cost per click for keywords as low as possible while still getting spend. Now what you can do is each day, say for instance you have a word that is at that has a $3 spend per click, you can try to drop the price of that by 10 to 15 cents. For instance at 2.90, then 2.80, 10 cents each day, and then see how long you can drop the price and if your product gets still gets clicks and still gets impressions. And then test it off of that and see how long you can drop it while still receiving clicks and impressions now don't be afraid to drop your cost per click because each day when other sellers have high bids once they're once they exhaust their you know bids then you'll rank higher and higher on the first page so don't worry about that at all you know that's something that i really had an issue with at first which i didn't really understand but now i do and it's worked great for me now the second strategy is to set strict campaign budgets for instance you know maximum 40 dollars a day across all your ad campaigns and with hopes of getting at least four sales at ten dollars profit so you can um, at least break even on that if no additional sales now obviously like you want to hope for you know four eight ten twelve plus sales now there are slow periods you know january after the holidays like right now and you know certain times of the year we're just you know you have uh, slow sales days and what i recommend doing is also to remove keywords that are on a ranked listing with 15 clicks and zero sales now obviously this is a dud and the word is just wasting ad spend and it's a waste of your money what you can also do is remove the keywords on a new listing with at least 30 clicks and zero sales now why say 30 clicks on a new listing is because you want to fully test it out and see if you know like you'll get sales from it because with the new listing you know the average conversion rate i think is about two to five percent ish and then on a fully ranked listing with reviews it's about 10 to 15 for a fully ranked listing so i highly recommend trying that out and then lastly remove keywords with above break even a cost after 25 clicks and no sales and obviously unprofitable so say if you had um, one word which you know has an a cost of 110 percent and it has you know above 25 clicks then i would obviously remove this keyword because it's just wasting money and it's not profitable all right guys that's the end of the video so i hope you really enjoyed you know it takes a lot of effort and a lot of work and time and a lot of time editing to make a video like this you know it's my second video on youtube so i'm really trying to learn the ropes learn how to edit learn how to make a proper video so I promise guys, content will get much better as time goes on. So hopefully this helped you. So if you guys enjoyed the video, please leave me a like and subscribe to the channel and I'll make more content. You know, just let me know what you guys wanna see and I'll see you guys in my next video. Go crush it.